I thought about it and I was like, who makes the most consistent frozen drinks in the world? It's mm -hmm. Starbucks. Oh. Antigua is a bit of a snobbery about frozen cocktails, but in this episode, we are going to make one of the best frozen cocktails you've ever tasted with some hacks to make it easy for you to make it home. I would love to welcome to the show one of the most precise and innovative cocktail makers from New York City, my buddy, Mr. Garrett Richard. Spike, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, welcome back to the, well, you've never been on the Breezeway. No, I was on the mobile Breezeway. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> we first met in uh, Florida at the Hookie Lab. Yeah, a lot less people in Aloha shirts mm -hmm. and a lot less humidity right now. <laughs> so tell me about the bar that you work at. I've heard so much about the Sunken Harbor Club. Would you call it a tiki bar? It's definitely tropical escapist. Mm -hmm. I would say it definitely harkens to places like the Molokai Bar and even earlier. Um, mm -hmm. But the, I, the concept is, a nautical ship. It's a 19th century ship that has been sunken. It's also like an abandoned club for the building. The building dates back to 1897. Wow. So uh, there's a lot of lore involved with the space. There's a lot of lore involved with our members. It's like and, Gangs of New York stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like the dude with the, the butcher knives. Yeah, um, Daniel Day-Lewis's character. Yes. Yeah. We're also close to Red Hook, which uh, Sunken Harbor Club has roots in Red Hook, and Red Hook was a huge naval uh, center of Brooklyn, you know, very close to the Statue of Liberty. So we have a lot of that going on. One of our partners also used to build boats. So like there's Ooh. just a lot of nautical ephemera everywhere. I like you comparing it to the uh, Molokai bar because there, there are some people that do these tropical bars and try to distance themselves from tiki. I like how you like go, well, it's not exactly a tiki bar, but it definitely relates to things that have been established from the 50s or 60s. Yeah, we have, you know, we have port lights. We have lots mm -hmm. of different lighting effects. Three times a night, we actually do different events that happen to the ship. Okay. So depending on the time that you go to the bar, there might be a cast off. There might be a, you know, sinking effect that happens. But oh. uh, so really, Really, it's, uh, it's almost a choose your own adventure depending on what time your reservation is. So it's like an interactive thing. Yeah, too. yes. Oh. oh, absolutely. Wow, that's yeah. rad. I can't yeah. wait to go there eventually. Yeah. So we'll <laughs> no, we'll, we'll have you there for sure. Thanks. Uh. <laughs> and then recently you came out with this book. The book is called Tropical Standard. I wrote it with my co-author, Ben Schaefer. Mm -hmm. We started it June of 2020, uh, came out in May of 2023. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so quick-ish, yeah. but you know, a lot of this work came from a couple of years of me doing pop-ups in New York. For a number of years, you know, there weren't really any tiki or tropical adjacent bars, but it was very underground, which I actually really appreciated. Mm -hmm. So there were people doing lots of different nights. Tiki Mondays from Brian Miller, there was um, Sunken Harbor Club started as a pop-up. Oh. And then uh, I was doing my own called Exotica, which was at Rain's Law Room. And a lot of the recipes sort of got beta tested here. And then when I was locked in my apartment, got refined mm -hmm. further. Do you have a favorite uh, Exotica song? That's oh, really tough. I like Surfboard by Esquivel quite a bit. Ooh, yeah. Esquivel. Yeah. I do like Esquivel. Yeah, Very yeah. Nice. Esquivel, uh, yeah, we play a lot at the bar. Okay. And, um, yeah, big fan. Yeah. Okay, so you had a pop up called, called Exotica. Yeah, and that's where I did a lot of my work. At the same time, my day job was I was working at a bar called Existing Conditions, and mm -hmm. Existing Conditions was cocktail bar in the West Village, very experimental, like did things with liquid nitrogen. You know, we had these red hot pokers that we built where we would flame cocktails with it. And that this all came from the brain of Dave Arnold and Don Lee. And both Dave and Don did a lot of really experimental stuff in their time. And this was like their house to do it in. The crazy part about it was, you think about like some of these experimental cocktail bars, sometimes they're very small, precious, this and that. Sure. If you haven't been to existing when it was open, it was 125 seats, super high volume. Wow. We blast like Boney M. We act made it look like a normal bar. So yeah. sometimes people would walk in there and have no idea what was going on. And then we were doing all these crazy things. Uh -oh. So when I was starting to reevaluate all the work I had done in the last couple of years, became a marriage of the modernist techniques that I was doing at existing mm -hmm. with all the retro stuff that I was doing at Exotica. And, you know, for some people they're like, oh, that's, that's cool, it's innovative, but I, for, for my argument, I think 
back when Don the Beachcomber started, he was the modernist back then. He was yeah. the one that was embracing new technology. Mm -hmm. He was the one that was embracing new ideas, you know. and Multiple ingredients yeah, in one cocktail. Multiple yeah. base spirits. That was very rare beforehand. Sure. And using electricity, which was also very rare. So for this book, I think it's very much like a one foot in the past and one foot in the future kind of read. So this book contains all kinds of new techniques. Yeah. And I love the book, I've read the book, and I haven't made any cocktails from it. I know, this is why we're here. It can be a little intimidating for sure because there's a lot of new stuff, I think, in t for people that make you know these types of cocktails like yourself. And But I think the idea is every single drink has a lesson. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that then you can take that and apply it to your own home bartending. So okay. today we're gonna be able to learn how to do frozen drinks. And then I think this is gonna make for you the blender less intimidating. And you'll you'll know a lot of things of like, oh, when I make a blender drink, I can't, you know, like I'm I should do X, Y, and Z. No, but I think for a lot of, here's the thing. Yeah. With a blender, it's really tough to nail well because you have to hit good texture. Yeah. You have to hit balance of sweet and sour, which is really tough because you, you have to accommodate for so much water. Right. And then you, it can't just taste like a smoothie from like sweet green. It's gotta have some, some bite to it too. Totally, right? it can't be too watery yeah. or runny. It can't be too like chunky with ice. Yeah. So yeah, maybe yeah. I'm scared of yeah. uh, blenders. <laughs> I was, I was before I jumped into it. Yeah, I, yeah maybe I'm projecting a little bit. <laughs> maybe I'm not scared of blenders because yeah. I just don't know how to use yeah. it right. I will say a lot of bars are. This is still oh. like, this is still, and even at Sunken, I'm I'm slowly trying to put one back there. We have a lot of Hamilton Beach mm -hmm. blenders and the regular blender that y'all have mm -hmm. here, this one, it came from an evolution of the Hamilton Beach. The Hamilton oh. Beach was created around 1911. This guy Beach created a very small mobile motor. Yeah. And originally they were gonna use it for other things like sewing machines and things mm -hmm. like that. Somebody came up with the idea, instead of the paddle being on top, what if we put a blade on the bottom? Oh. And by 1937, they approached Fred Waring, the, the band leader, as to be sort of like the George Foreman of this product. What they created was the first commercial blender and that's oh. really what like launched this whole movement. It wasn't the first daiquiri also blended? Not the first daiquiri, but really once Cuba became a destination for cocktails, mm -hmm. this started uh, exploding and Constantino Ribalagua and the Florida Bar really created the template for like how you're supposed to do frozen drinks. We give a lot of credit to them in, in Tropical Standard. There's a lot of really smart techniques from mm -hmm. the Cuban Contenero style that work for these drinks. So at La Florida, they did use Oh yeah, that they still they still okay. still use blenders. Yeah, to okay. this day. Yeah, uh, and when you have one of those, you're like, oh, this is really balanced. It it's got a really cool texture, and you know, it's like it it breaks all those stereotypes you were talking about at the beginning. Yeah, you of know. like cruise ship cocktails. Yeah. Although, if you do want some cruise ship cocktails, you can <laughs> join me on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Cruise. We're going to be going to Jamaica, Cozumel, the Cayman Islands. That next, sounds great. Yeah, yeah, next October. I hope you can join us. Yeah, can I go? <laughs> I know. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe we could work yeah, that right. out. Yeah, because we're already going to have Ed Hamilton joining us. So. Oh man, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, so you're going to be si well situated on rum. Sorry so about this. Fine. There's like this bright light across your chest yeah. right now. We're doing this during the day. This is the first cocktail yeah. show we've done during the day. So that's because of my schedule. It's because yeah. I'm difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gone through and I've looked at most of these recipes and I'm gone. I don't, dude, I don't know what you're talking about with xanthan gum and scales and stuff. Sure. So can you get all these ingredients from Amazon? You can get them through Amazon okay. and then Xanthan, which we'll get, get into. There's a couple like vegan baked good companies that if you go in the aisle where you see like all the overnight oats stuff, okay, it's usually there. It's easier and easier to get. And mm. we'll explain once we make the drink where, where, where this mysterious ingredient comes from. Okay, but, cool. So this is gonna be a frozen drink, as we said. I brought this drink to the breezeway because the last time we made a cocktail at Hookie Lao, mm -hmm. Uh, you had a segment before I got on stage with you and Hurricane Hayward where you made a vodka cocktail that had 151 and some other ingredients. <laughs> That's right. And it was really bad, right? Yeah, it was really it was bad. Not good. Uh -huh. I was like, it, it'd be fun to bring a cool vodka drink to the breezeway. And I know, I know, I know you want rum right now, I can see. But here's the thing is... I'm like, vodka's fine. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of really interesting tropical drink makers from the past and present that mm -hmm. used vodka, like Harry Yee, J. Popo Galsini, mm -hmm. and especially his time at Kelbo's. He had a whole okay. section of vodka drinks, including okay. he had one called the Pink Fire, which he said was Johnny Carson's favorite, mm. which I really want to know what that drink is. Yeah, um, seriously. 
I think it was called Starfire, maybe. But and then Tiki Tea has like a number of vodka cocktails, which mm -hmm. some of them are my favorite when I visit there. Like the there's a they have the Tiki Kapu and a couple okay. other ones like that. So I think there is a challenge because I think it, it requires with with something as neutral as vodka, it requires that you make everything really interesting mm -hmm. and all you need is an ABV boost to make that cocktail work. And that tends to give you a challenge as a drink mixer like how do you how do you give complexity and texture but not have like things like the high esters of a you know smith and cross or whatever sure right? yeah so you were going to bring a bunch of stuff yeah and then you requested that i supplied some stuff yeah the only vodka that i had was kettle one it's totally gonna work okay yeah. Yeah. now if you had your choice of vodkas if the people out there yeah. were to buy something specifically for your cocktail is there a vodka that you would recommend. Yeah, when I was working on this drink, I had a hundred proof vodka, which I think nowadays I think it's Smirnoff and Stoli okay. that make a hundred proof. Just for a little bit extra kick. I mean, I think we all can handle the extra alcohol. <laughs> um, but uh, if you want to get really nerdy and fun kind of spirit stuff, there are a couple of vodkas that are made from milk, which have a really great texture okay. and work marvelously in things like Blue Hawaii's and Chi Chi's and what have you. And one of those comes from England. It's called Black Cow. We used to have it in the well at Sunken Harbor Club. And now we use one from uh, New Zealand. So if you look for anything, a, a vodka made from milk, it's great because it has this really heavy texture on your tongue, but it's still neutral in flavor. Okay. So you kind of get the best of both worlds, which, okay. is, yeah, which is pretty cool. But this is totally going to work because as you see, all the other ingredients are going to be very strong in flavor. And mm -hmm. all we need is just, we just need pure ethanol. <laughs> yeah. And so for this cocktail, we will be using vodka. Yeah. Limes. Let's wait for that airplane real quick. Yep. <laughs> oh my God, this light. It's like on your, it's on oh, your yeah. chest now. Yeah. Should we block that? How do we block that? Some sort of object. Yeah, there you go. I, it's, it's further up. It's where the roof is. But that would be perfect right there. Oh, yeah. If I don't move, I'm right here. We're good. Okay, we fixed the light on your. Oh, there's a hole between that pufferfish and that. And the, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We figured out the light situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coconut cream, Thai basil leaves, and a saline solution. Yeah, a lot of super weird stuff. Yeah. But it's like easy to find this stuff, right? I mean, it's, if you're near an Asian market, Thai market, Vietnamese market, you should be able to find... The basil. Yeah, the Thai basil. Okay, and then um, everything else probably on Amazon, right? Yeah, easy. You also have a scale. <laughs> I do have a scale. That's only because sometimes with ice, it, mm -hmm. it's you don't get the same type of ice. You have to have the good stuff. Okay. But we're going to pretend that you don't have the good stuff, and it's just we're just using like generic ice. Okay. And that's a way to get around that. But it's because you have the crushed little pellet ice, mm -hmm. you could actually measure this ice with a regular measuring cup that you would use in a in a kitchen okay yeah. and that is yeah. super important right like the amount of ice that you're yeah for a frozen drink it's sort of make or break okay um, but yeah the name of this drink is called the cloud forest Ooh. it's a reference to one of uh, thailand's national parks and the idea is to sort of blend elements of the chi chi the missionary's downfall and then to just do a little bit of a nod to my own past um dave arnold who opened existing editions, he wrote my forward. He had a drink called the Thai Basil Daiquiri. Okay. And so it's kind of blending all those three together. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I am super thirsty for yeah. a frosty <laughs> cocktail. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so yeah. what's the first step here? All right, so we're gonna build in our blender. I'm gonna move this so that everyone can see what we're doing. Um, so we're gonna start with a couple drops of can salt. Yes. Okay, yeah. a couple drops of salt. So this is just salt yeah. water. Yeah, this is salt water. It's about four, parts water to one part salts. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And the idea is just, you know, you season your food, why don't you season your drinks, right? <laughs> why don't you? Yeah, and it's gonna it's gonna pop a lot of different elements. It's gonna make the bridge between the sour and the sweet uh, much clearer on your tongue. Okay. You know how you taste certain cocktails and Hold it's up. a little... It's a fucking airplane or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're like, man, yeah. I was like right in the middle of a thing. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, salt is a really good bridge between sour and sweet. You know how like you have you, you're out at a bar and just a cocktail can taste muddy sometimes. Muddy. You know where it's like the flavors aren't clear. It's a little it's a little oh, washed out. Yeah. Uh, sometimes salt is like the answer to that. Sometimes it's not the only answer, but okay. it's definitely one that can uh, can help. So yeah, we're gonna start with a couple drops of salt. So um, first tip 
Dude, put some salt in your cocktail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the easiest uh, drinks to test this on is like either a Mai Tai or a daiquiri. If you're a martini person, I think martinis also, although sometimes you get that with the olive. But Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. The brine. Yeah, exactly. So I know stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna start with our citrus. <laughs> Cut your hand off. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna just do a half ounce of lime juice. There's not too much lime in this. So whoa, whoa, whoa. You do the, the cutting off the end thing too. Yeah. So a couple of people on the show have come on and done that same kind of thing. What's your thought behind that? Well, so I've been on tour with my co-author Ben and we've done a bunch of cities, I think about eight or nine at this point for Tropical Standard. And uh, we got to hang out with Julio Bermeo, the guy who created the Tommy's Margarita, owns Tommy's Mexican restaurant in San Francisco. Oh. And uh, they hand squeeze all their lime for every single drink. Like, oh. And they're like robots or like, like torture. You know. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> wild. But we asked him, we were at Trader Vic's Emeryville and we got to do a little talk about his cocktail, the Tommy's Margarita, and then talk about how it relates to the Mai Tai. And was, but he talked mm. about how they cut their limes, they cut the ends off to avoid some of the bitterness and then oh. also just get a little bit more juice out of your limes. So, okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah. That light is like red on your face. Yeah, now. I'm gonna, we're gonna fine strain it. At Sunken Harbor, we- What is this technique? Yeah, we like to get the pulp out. I think for some drinks you can use the pulp, but I think for more complicated cocktails, I think the pulp kind of can step on some of the other ingredients. You know, if you have a three ingredient cocktail, like use the pulp. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you straight, you you juice right into a right strainer. In strainer. Yeah, we're Voodoo. efficient here. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna do a half ounce of lime juice. We're we making one or two. Oh yeah. Oh, we're gonna do two, right? Yeah, yeah. You bet your ass yeah. we are. Cause I'm not working. When I work, I don't drink. Yeah. So yeah, I should be able to enjoy this, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. That is amazing. I've never considered <laughs> doing that before. Like, yeah, you got you got two hands, right? <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right, we're good. That looks like it's a half ounce. All right. So yeah, half ounce per cocktail. Also, I forgot, cause we're doing two. I'm gonna... Some bonus drops there. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna do our coconut cream. Mm. So in the book, we have a recipe called coconut mix. I'm sure you've dealt with this on the show is like Coco Lopez is gonna be a little unwieldy sometimes. You know? Kind of gross. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a marvel of science and, and it's a product that I love, yeah. um, but this kind of tames it just a little bit. Um, okay. So Coco Lopez is sweeter than simple syrup. And what we do is lower the sweetness of it with some coconut milk. Okay. Yeah, and so this mix is the exact same sweetness as simple. You can use it exactly the same way you use it as simple. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a little extra flavor from some Thai coconut milk. I have a lot of models on my show. Uh -huh. And uh, they look at the calorie stuff on the back of the... <laughs> of the uh, wait, sure. what's the squeeze bottle one? Coco Lopez? No. No, Coco Lopez is canned. Coco Real. Coco Real, yeah. I yeah. like that because it's convenient. Not necessarily yeah. because it tastes Because it's, it's got the little, little right. squeezer, yeah. But exactly. the calorie, like the numbers on the back are shocking. <laughs> so is this better for you? Well, it's going to have slightly less sugar because you're going from rich, sim simple syrup kind of levels, which is where Coco Lopez is, to simple. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So slightly better yeah. for you. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give the health effects of this drink. Yeah, I know. It's like, well, we're we're drinking. Yeah. This is not yeah. good for you. But I think you'll feel better probably. Um, <laughs> so per drink, we're going to do an ounce and a half of this coconut mix. Okay. It was really cool. I was just at Major Domo. Old coworker of mine, uh, Davy Sorrentos, he's the head bartender there. Uh, they use the coconut mix on their menu in their oh. their uh, lime leaf daiquiri. So very nice. Yeah, I, that was a surprise for me. It was because I was like, "What's the coconut in here?" And he was like, "It's yours, dude." It's yours, <laughs> yeah. dude. Also, he said that the yeah. trick with this stuff is to run it under hot water or like. Yeah, if you put this yeah. back in the refrigerator, it's gonna seize up on you. Right. So uh, it helps to like run it through hot water a little bit. Okay. I mean, that's with any like kind of creamy thing, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. You just kind of don't know if it's like if it's going to make it spoil or I guess it doesn't really spoil, does it? It will, but I would say if you do like one can of, of Coco Lopez and mm. then like a little bit of, of coconut milk that, you know, for a party, that's going to be enough. Okay. Uh, we use it at Sunken Harbor Club in the Angostura Colada, mm. which the Angostura Colada started at the pop up of Sunken Harbor Club. And then now we have our modern version for Sunken Harbor Club, the bar. So, yeah, it's a very valued ingredient for us. <laughs> We are going to wash out the coconut mix. So I'm actually going to pour just slightly a little bit more than an ounce and a half. Okay. Just because there's that Coco Lopez in there and the coconut milk. 
and we're gonna do an ounce and a half per drink. So, you know, this is on the lighter end of the scale. Mm -hmm. um, do you like the menus that have like the light, medium, heavy, like the old school? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's how we do it at, not to put you on the spot, that's how we do it at Sunken Harbor Club. We have three levels in the shallows, that's where all our light drinks are. Oh, okay. And then we do the Twilight Zone, that's the medium, so that's mm -hmm. where the Mai Tai is. And then like our zombie is in the abyss, so yeah. <laughs> the zombie does belong in the yeah. abyss. Yeah, and it's really fun. I feel like it's kind of self-moderating at that mm -hmm. point because there are some people that are like, I got a long night ahead of me, I'm gonna stay in the shallows. And then there are people like, I had a terrible day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the abyss and I'm not leaving. Totally. You know? Well, that is yeah. the problem with tiki cocktails usually is that like, you know, you can really only have a couple before things start going right. yeah. wrong for you. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like those old school menus, like when you're at the Molokai, it's like, you know what you're getting into. There's no surprises. Like, sure, with yeah. That, you know, that light, medium, heavy system. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have all of our liquid ingredients. We're going to do some herbs just like we do in the Missionary's Downfall. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but this is Thai basil. You, you should taste some Thai basil on its own because it's definitely more intense than like your, you know, your regular like Italian basil. Oh yeah, it tastes like um, shabu shabu. <laughs> yeah. Is that what they put in there? I don't know, that's they a good probably question. Do. But there's a lot of curry, you know, a lot of curries that use it. Mm. But we're gonna do about 15 leaves per drink. So, you know, not unlike a Missionary's Downfall. Um, kind of bitter. Yeah. Almost that Italian flavor, but kind of on the Asian side, I guess. Does that make any sense? <laughs> 40, 50, mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the nice thing is with this, with the blender, it's going to cut the herbs evenly, and you're going to get less of that bitter flavor than just actually putting it in your mouth. That's why I wanted to do the little before and after. Mm -hmm. um, that's what's so brilliant about you know old Don the Beach Corner drink, the missionaries, is like chopping the herbs with the blender evenly and having a little bit of alcohol and some some citrus, you get this very clean mint flavor in that drink. Right. And with this, we're gonna get some very clean basil flavor, which will be great. Okay, well yeah, the Missionary's Downfall is one of my favorite cocktails. I think it's so good. But I'm excited to see what happens with um, your kind of flipping around of ingredients and stuff. It's got coconut, everyone loves a coconut drink, right? Totally. <laughs> it's really funny with Dave's drink, the Thai basil daiquiri, he, doesn't use a blender unless he's like on the road when it was existing conditions or his old bar, Brooklyn Dax. What he would do is he would actually put it in a shaker and he would put liquid nitrogen on the herbs, freeze them, and then with a blender, turn it into a powder. And that makes a really great herb flavor. But it's really funny there how similar this is to that in, in your mouth, but the processes are completely different. You gotta give it like the Terminator 2 treatment. Yeah, exactly. Like freeze yeah. it and shatter it. Freeze that cup. We got these herbs. We got okay. all the ingredients. We're not actually going to add ice first. We're going to do something called a dry blend. Oh. And that'll give you a uniform drink because you probably, there's some missionaries downfalls where sometimes they look like pesto a little bit. They totally. got like, and this is going to give you like a nice uniform green, green color. Okay. Another fun tip. Yeah. Dry, dry blend. The dry blend. <laughs> So it looks good and creamy. Yeah, good and creamy. Mm -hmm. And you can see like all the herbs are chopped. You know, we'll get a little bit more of that, the remainder with the with the ice. Okay. All right, so here's here's the weird the weird part, right? We were talking about this earlier. Some more weird stuff. Yeah, we're, some weird wild stuff. Right. Yeah. Xanthan gum, okay, why do I use it? So back when I was doing Exotica, a little bit before we started doing the pop-up, I was like, why is it, that all these cocktail bars, they have these frozen machines and the drinks are great there, but then you make it in here and it's not as good as the frozen machine. And it's because it's a very different process, but I was like looking around, I was like, who's making good frozen drinks? I thought about it and I was like, who makes the most consistent frozen drinks in the world? It's mm -hmm. Starbucks. Oh. Yeah. And I started going on the like Starbucks, Reddit, like employee threads, like, okay, what do they put in their Frappuccino? And all of their mixes included a little bit of this. Oh, and dude, the Frappuccino holds together. Yeah, like, and I'm like, ever. that's not coming from a frozen machine, it's coming from a yeah. blender. Like, what's going on? What what secrets do they have? And luckily, I mean, this isn't like, you know, leaking. They're, they It's on their website. They have the yeah. calorie facts and all that stuff. Don't see me Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. I started playing with like, okay, a little bit in there, and I found that the drink didn't separate, and it looked like it came from a frozen machine, where people are like, wow. do you have a frozen machine in the back? And we're like, no, it's, it's, it's coming from here. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, so it 
a little bit goes a long way. This stuff, you, you'll see it in like vegan baking and mm -hmm. you know other kind of applications. Once it gets wet, it does get a little slimy. So mm -hmm. you, you don't want to use too much because then it'll just get, so we're going to use a like quarter teaspoon. Wow. Per drink. So, okay. Um, but you know, quarter teaspoon, I mean, you probably have one for the Perno around somewhere. Yeah, here. totally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and we're also gonna do a dry blend on that too, but I wanted to do the herbs first. So that's so uh, little, like such a small so amount. So little, little goes a long way, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so already your book is not nearly as scary, at least this recipe is not nearly as scary as uh, I previously considered. <laughs> and the nice thing about blender drinks that like when you're having a party is, you know, you can do like three or four and then just like serve like half sizes to everyone and everyone's like chilling for, you know, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, all right, and then final part. Again, we're doing the method if you have regular ice from your fridge, mm. but if you, well, if you have nice crushed ice, mm -hmm. you can do an, a cup and a half of crushed ice per drink okay. and you're good to go. But we're actually gonna weigh it because this takes all the guesswork out of it. Okay. This is my scale that I use to make iced tea at home. So <laughs> a little OXO scale, but if you have a scale at home that you do like coffee or anything like that. So okay. we're gonna do 170 grams of crushed ice. This takes all the guesswork out of it. Okay, and get that thing on Amazon, I'm sure. Yeah, no, I mean, I think scales are very useful in general. They help you make syrups better. Mm -hmm. um, they're good for, they're good for ingredients. Oh, this doesn't have a flat top. Now, now I have to definitely be ambidextrous. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hold this one? Yeah, that would be nice. Sure. All right, awesome. All right, so yeah, we're going to do 170 per drink. Yeah, it's just like making a pour over coffee or something like that, you know? Did I tell you the precision? This is it right here. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, I think. Good? Yeah, a little, little smidge, a little smidge. Yep, yeah, we're good. All <laughs> okay. right. Now we're gonna blend this up. In the book, we talk about, I'm gonna give you a very general version of it, but if you just put this on high, everything's gonna like bounce around. Yeah. So like what I like to do is go like kind of medium speed, go to high speed, then low speed, and that's gonna get like all the, you oh. got two settings, so I'm just gonna go back and forth between high and low. Okay. And then that should get everything. Cause sometimes stuff flies and then you mm. wind up with chunks of ice. And you're totally, like, it's yeah. It's not good. Okay. Um, gonna just to make sure that nothing was since it's a two okay yeah all right yeah we're good okay cool so is that it yeah do you just are you letting the ice settle is that the thing i wanted to make sure all the ice got through there okay um but yeah this looks solid okay yeah, yeah. I, um yeah you see like all the texture here and then that looks split, so good. Split this so it's not just one, okay. getting one element of it. But yeah, you can see very uniform texture. All of the herbs are crushed. Mm -hmm. It does have the consistency of like a, a frappuccino. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no caffeine. Yeah. We gotta right. get we gotta get some Red Bull for that Red Bull floater. <laughs> That's right. It yeah. is a vodka drink. Yeah. Well, it, passion fruit. <laughs> there's passion fruit Red Bull. So. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a thing. Yeah. We're gonna garnish with some oh. nice little sprigs of Thai basil just to remind everyone what's in the drink. Okay. Do you have to? You don't. We could slap a little, little of that. It, it's so aromatic. Like I feel like when I was we were driving down here, my whole car was just smelling <laughs> like Thai basil. It's not. It does smell incredible. Not the worst problem in the world by mm. by any means. Totally. There's a little bud yeah. in there. Yeah, and then just for color contrast, like nice little orchid. Dude. Yeah. That wow. looks incredible. Like cloud forest. And so from Garrett Richard at the Sunken Harbor Club, this is the cloud forest. Yeah, yeah. And then you gotta do the like frozen drink test, which is like, will the straw fall over? Ah, uh, it stands up. Look That's at that. Amazing. <laughs> also, if you haven't already, join the Patreon. Join the Patreon, you get opportunities to buy merch before it goes on a sale to anybody else, and you'll help support this thing. Yeah. Keep it going. This is important. I, thank you very much. <laughs> Garrett, thank you so much yeah, for coming, dude. You. I appreciate it. And thank you for thank making you. a super complicated, but kind of yeah. not, 
yeah cocktail it's fun that's yeah. the, that's the whole point is it's fun right yeah totally oh it's nice to have that drink again oh that's so good it does have like a smoothie consistency yeah but the asian flair from the basil thai basil almost has this like anise finish to it like you get basil but then it kind of like the sh like the same sharpness of like an absinthe or something yeah you know but not like overpowering either. Yeah, it's no, it's, it's, it's very mild sharpness, but. Dude, that is incredible. It is so tasty. And then there's like a hint of the coconut back there. Yeah. And no alcohol at all. You could drink <laughs> 700 no, and, of these. And here's the thing. If, if y'all wanted to play with, you know, throwing gin in there, throwing mm. uh, light rum, oh. go to town. Like we, we definitely encourage, like for a lot of the recipes that are in the book, mm -hmm. we go, if you would want to explore this idea, we're not going to go through it, but right. you can. And like with this, definitely, because like this is just the vodka is here for ABV. It's here to boost that basil flavor. But mm -hmm. if there's a white spirit you like, it might work. So would you say that with this book, if you go through, make a shopping list on Amazon, you can yeah. pretty much pick up everything you need aside from the fresh ingredients? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I did this book during the pandemic in mm -hmm. two places, New York, which, yeah, New York has a lot of stuff, but a lot of stuff is closed. And then I did it uh, in the mountains with uh, my partner's family. We flew down and we went to South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So we were on the border of South and North Carolina. I actually worked on the cloud forest in South Carolina. So yeah. South uh, Carolina born. Yeah. <laughs> this is so delicious. Dude, it's so good. Thank you. I'm not just saying that. How it's many like, frozen drinks have you done on the show? Almost none. Yeah. All right. So now we're <laughs> opening the floodgates. We're doing totally. it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite vintage New York tiki bar? Oh, that's a good question. Because um, I do. Would you say the Hawaii Kai? Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. is featured, of course, in Goodfellas. Yeah, Hawaii Kai is up there. I'd say Jade Island is really fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, I went with a couple of coworkers and uh, Adam Colasar, who he makes the Latitude 29 ore shot. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to Jade very recently. And actually, it's like it's, it was such a power move. We would order only one course and one cocktail uh -huh. and then finish the course and then be like, all right, what do you want next? Instead of like, you know, normal restaurant, you're like, OK, we'll have this, this and this. Mm -hmm. And like we kind of did it like a cocktail pair. Wow. And the best part was uh, one of my bartenders, he kept ordering this one drink that listed allspice on the menu. And he's like, I can't taste the allspice. I was like, this is an old restaurant. They're, they're not going to have allspice dram anymore in yeah. the bar. And he ended up getting the same drink three times with no allspice. Oh, man. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, very That's funny. like one of the best flavors, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. He was jonesing for it. And they, I was like, it's not there. It's not going to be <laughs> yeah. in the back bar. I was like, we're lucky that Bitters is like in the drink. So that place still exists then, Jade Island? Still exists. And it's very late in its design. Like okay. it, it has, what I, I think the most interesting part of it is there's these booths that have these photos that are backlit mm -hmm. like of you know probably like Tahiti and Hawaii and stuff oh, yeah. and it's very like it reminds me of like almost like 64 world's fair like 60 like late six mid to late 60s design which is like right. you don't see that very no, often. No you don't yeah, yeah. I know it's, it's so funny because you look at like a lot of our home tiki bars that are like filled with all kinds of stuff and then you look at pictures of the original tiki bars and it's kind of sparse. Yeah. But that was part yeah. of the style. It was like really well thought out. And I think I would kill to go to Kelbo's like uh. here. Uh, you know, I, I try to get as much info about them. Like I just I, I've driven by what's there now because it's like it was a strip club for a while because it was like called like Fantasy World or something. It was it had a big yeah, tower. Yeah, yeah. The, there was yeah, a light. But that's where Kelbo's was. Yeah, Lighthouse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the Lighthouse. Yeah. I believe the Go-Go signed their contract there. Their music contract. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, there's a photo of them at Kelbo's. And then there's there's recent photos that have kind of popped up of like Lux and Ivy from the Cramps at places like Damon's and the Bahuka. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of music and stuff tied into a lot of those things. Yeah, music is a big part of like my whole attraction to this. Like I started mm -hmm. at the end of high school, I worked at a lounge station in Burbank. It was called Fabulous 690 as an intern. A lounge station. Yeah, yeah, I know it was on AM. That's how little faith they had in it. <laughs> totally. uh, like music on AM is pretty much dead at this point. Mm. But it was really cool because I got to get exposed to a lot of different 
artists and mm. some of the instrumental stuff, like Ultra Lounge stuff. Oh yeah, uh, was they were they would play every once in a while. But you know, it was a lot of Mel Torme and Brian Setzer and mm -hmm. uh, Mel's daughter was a DJ there. Wow. And Gary Owens was also a DJ there, and I edited his shows because he would do them remotely from his house. And Gary was the voice of Space Ghost. He was an uh, announcer on Laughing. For me, then I was like, okay, I'm certain path of life I'm gonna go down. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. There's And there are things that ne you don't necessarily realize that that's gonna form the rest of your life. And no, not at all. Yeah. yeah. There are a couple of tiki bars that predated yours. Yeah. That are modernist revival ones. Yeah, around 2010, 2012, there was a, there was a, a spark and mm -hmm. then uh, for many reasons, uh, a lot of those just moved on. But, uh, but I think even before that was Otto's. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, Autos. I've seen great shows there. For me, it's like that reminds me of like growing up here, like going to shows at like the Roxy and stuff. But like in a like it's like Roxy dressed as like tropical or whatever, yeah, totally. You know, but or, like or the whiskey, super tiny. Yeah, it's a punk rock bar. Yeah, I yeah, mean, and essentially. like yeah, for me that taps into my, that like high school like show nostalgia for me. Totally, because yeah. you grew up here, right? Yeah, my folks are in the valley. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think those first crops of, of bars uh, were pretty fun. Like there was Painkiller mm -hmm. and then Julie Reiner, who probably a lot of y'all know from Drink Masters, she had, a, she had one called Lonnie Kai, which I was there all the time. Oh. And that's actually like what pushed me to be like, I want to be behind the bar. I want to, mm -hmm. you know, cause I was still doing some radio stuff, but I was there like once a week and, I, and eventually I was like, can I just get it? I just work here. <laughs> I didn't end up working there, but uh, Julie helped me out a lot. Well, yeah. now you've become like, one of the most precise bartenders. Like, I think most people are like, yeah, just put it, pour it to like the quarter ounce. Yeah. And you're like xanthan gum and like weighing ice and stuff. So I certainly appreciate your attention to detail. I think that's the most important part of tiki cocktails. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you know, you look at some of, of the old recipes that call for like four drops of almond extract. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to continue that, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally, yeah, totally. I'm just, I'm just on that four drops of almond extract train. Right. Uh, but also like moving it a little bit yeah. down, down the line. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, dude, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Yeah. And I, I hope y'all visit us in New York sometime. It'd be great. I'd love yeah. to come to New York. Yeah. Also, if you want to get your book. Yeah. Available at a lot of major book sellers, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kitchen Arts and Letters in New York. Yeah. And we have an Instagram for the book, Tropical Standard Book. And then mm. my Instagram is Garrett J. Richard, at Garrett J. Richard. And uh, Suck and Harbor Club also online. So yeah. yeah. This is so good, dude. I think it was, um, you know, before we totally sign off, I think yeah. a, a couple of years ago, maybe like three years ago, Eric Andre messaged me and he goes, I, I'm going to be in New York. I'm going to, I want to go to Tiki bars. Where do I go? And I write to one of my buddies in New Jersey, actually, um, Vincent from High Tide. Oh, High Tide, yeah. yeah. And I go, yeah. what are, what's the Tiki bars in New, in New York? So he goes, Sunken Harbor Club. So I relayed that to Eric Andre, like giant comedian guy. And now you guys are best friends. I answer cocktail questions for him. I, he's a great regular of our bar. He's, and you know, we, yeah, we're friendly. <laughs> it's, no, it's really cool. Um, I, I love how uh, passionate he is about like cocktails and yeah. has a ton of rum knowledge. Like, you know, uh, taught me some stuff. So yeah. <laughs> for such like a wild maniac. Yeah. He's like super passionate about cocktails. Yeah, no, yeah. it's really cool to see. And uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, we'll all get a drink together in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, if you've enjoyed yeah. this, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. If you don't hit that subscribe button, you can't get content like this. And, it's, and what are you doing with your life? True. <laughs> In Tiki, there's a bit of a snobbery about frozen. Let me say that again. I would love to welcome. Okay, and then we're gonna cut. And I would look. I would love to welcome onto the show. Uh, wait, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something more interesting. Yeah, go, go, go for it. So tell me about the bar that you work at in New York. Yeah, I am the chief cocktail officer, which is a name I came up with to Hold screw on. up. What the oh, yeah. fuck is going Sorry. on? It's like somebody yeah. loading a dumpster. Yeah, <laughs> dead bodies, yeah. Oh, you fuckers. That's the one problem with during the middle of the day, oh, is yeah. that like there's people doing stuff. Yeah. I'd love to welcome to the show one of the most precise, innovative, and there's an airplane. Stand by. And there's sunlight shining on me now. <laughs> okay, so, so any, so, okay, so I've gone through 
And so from yeah. Wait, hold on. I just got the car. We did it. Yeah, it's Dude, like, this drink as it, is so good. As it warm, I feel like with most frozen drinks, it's like as it warms up, you get more flavors. Like at the beginning, it's like oh. because it's so cold, your tongue can only perceive so much, and then oh. like halfway through, you're like, ah, it's spicier basil. Great. Yeah, you yeah. definitely get more of the basil flavor. Yeah. Oh man, it's so good. Okay, let me turn these things off. We can hang out for a second. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, dude. This yeah. is so good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.